Hi, everybody. Will here from Will Alexander's Dog Show Tips, brought to you by Canine Chronicle TV and Pro Plan. Today, we have a special guest. We have my, my buddy Doug Belter coming on. We're going to talk about this new CDC ruling, where, where is the rule for getting dogs back into the U.S. Doug, Doug, Doug has done a lot of research to try to sort through this for us. So let's, uh, let's find out what he has to say. Hi, everybody. Will here. A uh, special section of the interview chair. Today, we're going to talk about the new CDC ruling that is that is for dogs returning back to the U.S. Right now, what we all received was the ruling starting August 1st. All dogs entering the U.S., including those that left the U.S. and are returning, regardless of the country they are coming from, must be healthy upon arrival, which is fine. At least six months of age, microchipped accompanied by a CDC dog import form receipt and required vaccination and veterinary documents. Now, that all that sounds confusing as it, as it does, but I've asked my good friend Doug Belcher because Doug researches this stuff. We both do some transporting, so he really got into it. So Doug has looked into it. How's it going, Doug? Real good, Will. Uh, yeah, all right. Did you, are yeah. you tired of looking at computers? <laughs> oh, I am so buzzed out on I just my eyes are shot. <laughs> but I spent a couple hours with some very nice people at the CDC yesterday. Well, that's a, that's a and, good start. Yeah, they're, 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 they don't really provide, they're not directly CDC people. They're just people that answer the phones and use the information that we can get off our computers to give us answers. So it's not totally helpful because they, they can't expand on anything other than what they have in front of them. But they're they're very right. helpful. They're they're nice people. Uh, what this is being done? Why this is being done? When talking to Les and Hillary out in Calgary, and talking to you know, and they're transporters. As well. They have seven, but they have Seven Oaks Pet Logistics. They, so. And they're yeah, they they do transport all over the world. Is there were some dogs brought in from the Balkan states. And there's also been some imported from uh, Mexico, from some of the, uh, let's put it this way, some of the not-so-nice organizations down there. And they, uh, they've, they've had a couple cases of rabies, dog rabies. Now, Canada and the United States, and to a certain extent Mexico, has been classed as a rabies-free country. And at one time, that meant that you could basically come into the United States with any dog from a rabies-free country and not be required to have a vaccination record. Now, the states, I mean, that was that was the federal thing. So as long as you were standing at the border crossing, you were good. The minute you crossed into North Dakota, Michigan, uh, Ohio, uh, not Ohio, Ohio doesn't have a border with the U.S., but with Canada, uh, you know, like New York and things like that, the state would automatically, uh, rules would automatically kick in. And most of those were at three months of age, you had to have a rabies vaccine. These are all things that most of us already knew. It's just right. stuff. Right. So what they're doing is because they've had a couple of these rabies cases come in, they are freaking out because they don't want to lose their rabies free status. And I totally understand that because yeah, if you think awesome. this is difficult now, if Canada and the U.S. lose their rabies-free status, yeah, we're going to be in our world of hurt as far as paperwork and everything else that goes. So when you pick up the phone and talk to the CDC, please don't scream at the nice people. It's not their fault. It's the organization that's trying to put this in. And remember, this is not set in stone yet. These are proposed regulations. Oh, okay. Well, that's that's a good – that's – it's promising they, anyway they might come they, they've already dropped a couple things like like i was talking to you they, they when i first read it through i kind of freaked out a little bit because they said we were only going to be allowed to bring two dogs back in well that makes it kind of impossible for a dog handler to go into canada even if you're willing to do the paperwork to come back to the united states to uh 
take more than two dogs, it, it pretty well shuts that down. However, the six month rule that they've come in with uh, has kind of, I was talking to uh, a breeder and they said they bred three bitches because they had people in the U.S. wanting their bloodlines after right. they've been to the I national a couple times. That too, inquiry. And it has virtually, yeah, unless they're willing to wait till they're six months old, uh, you're pretty well canceling out any cross border of increasing bloodlines and using breeding stock that way. Uh, the, basically, as, as, as Dr. Friend, my, my beagle breeder said, yeah, it looks like uh, veterinarians with uh, repro clinics are going to become very busy because they're going to be doing a lot of fresh chilled and frozen because the litters are going to have to be, that's the only way we're going to get that kind of stuff done. It used to be, oh, I'll just ship the bitch to the U.S., get it bred and bring it back, but <laughs> not anymore. But it's also going to affect, like, we have a lot of snowbirds. And what, 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 for those of you who don't know what snowbirds are, it's, it's Canadians that winter in America, and right. they all want to bring their dogs with them, most yeah. of them. So yeah. it's, it's going to be a, a, no, it can't be. It's not like it's impossibly done, but it's still a lot of work to get it done. It's, it, it's just paperwork. Right. And as long as you follow And there's a cost the rules, to it. There's a veterinary cost to it as well. So. The veterinary cost, uh, the forms that you you fill out, like the, the uh, they have the last form. I'm just trying to get the exact name of it. Uh, Look at you, Bill. On your computer, papers. look at you. <laughs> <laughs> I got paperwork stacked up here, and it's just like, oh, my gosh, I don't even know where to start. Uh, instructions to complete the certificate. Uh, all dogs. Where is that? I'm just trying to find the all dog section. Uh, requirements, CDC import form receipt. That is not even available yet. Okay, so we haven't even been able to look at it to see what it's going to be as far as what is required to fill out. It will be available July 15th. July 15th. So we'll be able, yeah, so we'll be able to do that. Certification of foreign rabies vaccinate. Oh, that's another form for you guys. Uh, instructions how to complete as, as all for that. us as in Canadians or yes, yes. That's I'm I'm using me as here and you guys as can Canada. Right now, um, yes, I've I've already had a few calls about people. We talked about it already. Doctor Fran yeah. mentioned. Well, they want to get their dog up here to read it. Well, like <laughs> I suggest before August first. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am actually thinking of doing a trip because I've got a couple dogs that are going to need to come down from Canada to be bred here and then shipped back. And I'm almost thinking of trying to do it before the August 1st deadline, which means I've got to keep it for two or three months, which is kind of a pain, but we'll... Uh, is that a plug for your business? I ain't been offering a trip. To <laughs> <laughs> we now have maternity ward services that we can provide for you. No, <laughs> not doing that. Yeah. Uh, so for the transition period, when they were talking about uh, what your dog needs to enter the United States, I'm just trying to find the right page here. Because, yes, documents required in English. Hello. Uh, what your dog needs to enter in. Okay. Sometimes they hide this. You must apply for a CDC dog import permit uh, eight weeks prior to travel. So, I mean, this eight is going to require to travel. So, like, this, travel. say you're traveling August 1st, you're not, you don't have enough time to get it done. No, because because it's not going to, well, August 1st, July 15th. No, mm -hmm. you wouldn't have enough time because the forms aren't available yet. Right. Uh, the thing that I would encourage people to do is if you phone or you have anybody that you can talk to, even my American people, I'm encouraging them to be reasonable and contact their my American uh, people, <laughs> my American people, <laughs> my American uh, that, that can do it and, and want to do it. Contact their congressman or state senator and suggest to them that this needs, this is kind of muddled and it needs to be really clarified to make it 
because they're going to lose a lot of money. Both, Both sides. countries are going to yeah. lose a lot of money. Um, as I as I suggested to the CDC lady as I was talking to her, I made the comment that even Canada's asinine rule of eight months that makes me absolutely crazy where prior to eight months old, it's a commercial shipment if it's sold to someone who's a breeder or shows dogs. But after eight months old, it doesn't matter. Well, after eight months of age is when you're going to start doing some of your testing and seeing whether it's going to pan out. This Prior to that, is just a, it's just a ridiculous rule. But even the Canadian rules allow for people to come into Canada without filling out all the import paperwork if they have proof of exhibition, right. which means we have to have proof of entry into a Canadian show. There's not a, a – and you provide your vaccination records – there's uh, that exemption, so it's not a, it's not a problem. But coming back, if I go to, I, I, if I go to a show in Sault Ste. Marie, which is five miles across the Canadian border, in you know, in northern Michigan, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to do all this paperwork for all the dogs that I bring back. Get them back. Now, now this every time, not just once. I guess an every time yeah. deal. Like it's yeah. almost as if they could if they could give us a year long thing that might be a little more acceptable, but right like a passport. Uh, I would encourage anybody that's going to talk to congressmen, senators, even politely send a letter to the CDC recommending possibly changing it because at three months of age you have to have a rabies shot in most states in the United States. And I believe in Canada, that's almost uh, the provinces have put some of that in place, too. So at three months, you've got that. Then you have a 28-day waiting period after that. So if a dog was four months old, I don't see why it couldn't be imported anywhere. Right. Okay, if they want to put a four-month... That's common sense, anyway. Yeah, that's just common sense. If they want to do something practical, they should do something like Europe has done with their, with their uh, pet passports where each dog, just like a person, has a passport, and then it stick, it stays with that dog no matter where it goes. You've got a picture of the dog on it. You've got a uh, microchip number. Hope they're not smiling. Like Pardon me? No, Hope no. They're not smiling in the picture. If they're smiling, you know, you can't, you can't <laughs> smile in your passport picture. <laughs> they don't want to know if you got teeth or not. <laughs> but... I encourage everybody to read through the forms. I have, I had my vet send me a copy for uh, people going in. They said in the transitional period, this is going to be what you're, there we go. You're going to need the, uh, what it's called is the United States Interstate and International Certificate of Health Examination for small animals and it has to be a usda accredited veterinarian that's going to fill it out and that is good that's like we used to use for the airlines that's good for like 30 days as long as your vaccination of rabies does not run out while you're out of the country if that happens while you're out of the country oh you've got a world of hurt because now you have to go through all the uh regulations to bring dogs back in coming from a foreign country. Sounds like we got a lot of paperwork ahead of us, Doug. Uh, yeah, there is more than you actually. Okay, here we go. Let's go back to this one. And there we go, that one. Yeah, they sent me a, a requirements for all dogs. The CDC import reform receipt uh, you're going to have to, the CDC import form receipt can be filled out two to 10 days prior to arrival at a port. It's going to be like us when we fill out our manifests. Right. You, they're, they're probably going to have port numbers on there. Like I believe uh, Port Huron is 3802 or something like that. It, it's just the numbers that they have on there and it's all going to be done. And you can actually fill it out. At least we have a bit of a jump on them because we have that background. Everybody else, they are going to be scrambling. Yeah, yeah it's going to be. And and while it looks like there's a lot, uh, like requirements for valid rate, like you've got things to fill out here, and it says uh, 
you have to provide one of the don't get frightened by what you're reading when it says you have to provide one of the documents uh like it says have meet all requirements for all dog section above have one of the following documents certification of u.s issue rabies vaccine and then it goes down u.s endorsed uh export health certificate and uh this export certificate must have must remember this keep all your documents for your dogs okay if, because if this goes through you're going to be have to be able to prove through uh registration forms uh veterinary receipts that and with your veterinary receipts make sure that the microchip number is on every receipt for every dog uh you're gonna have to be able to prove that that dog was in say canada for six months prior to coming in because what's happened we've had a lot of dogs come shipped in from the balkan states or mexico and then they bring them down across uh they bring them down across the Canadian into the U.S. that way, and and they're skirting some of the some of the rules by filling out uh, import permits, and they're selling them to the pet shops and whatnot. And now you now you've got rabies in the country. Yeah. Uh, and, and let's let's face it, the average person's they're gonna they're gonna, they want to come to Canada or they or they want to I mean they want to go to the U.S. or the dog should yes if they see all this. The average person is going to go. Oh, I'm not going to do it. I'm just not oh, going to go. It's uh, yeah. What 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 this is going to create is this is going to create a loss of income for breeders, dog shows, every any anyone or anything that has to do with animals with right. with pets, pets or show animals. It's going to create a loss of income all the way through. I'm I'm. Well, even Thank towns because... that hold dog shows, let let's say the average show border show, Niagara Falls, say maybe twenty percent is Canadian entries. Well, no, they're really adding closer to forty percent on some of those shows. Okay. Well, then they're adding economy to that area too. It's... Yes, yes. I mean, it's a big amount of money that comes in just through hotels, travel restaurants you know how much yeah. dog show people like to eat it's, so it's, it's <laughs> affecting a lot of aspects of our sport yeah no i don't know, I don't and know what the... so if it's you not can saying contact... it can't be done i just i just I, it, it obviously can be done but what percentage of people are going to do it are they going to just not bother traveling anymore with their dog well maybe that's a Sideline business for Will Alexander and Prince yeah. Ariel. <laughs> <laughs> Brought to you by Will Alexander Pet Logistics. <laughs> you can sit there and fill out paperwork to your heart's content. Oh, and I uh, love you know. paperwork. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know you do. It's just so good. Mom! <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So it's uh, so what's the what's the bottom line then, Dougie? What do you what are your what is your advice to people watching? Watch and see, because like I said, some of these, this is not set in stone yet, and some of these can change. If you have the time to contact someone in the U.S. government, contact them nicely, be polite, and ask for either clarification or possibly suggest some rule changes that might come through. Because like I said, this is not According to what I've read, these are requirements set out by the CDC, which is much similar to the requirements that they put in place for COVID. Right. And, of course, we, we followed those rules as much as we could. Uh, so they're putting this in place. For that was the like protection, nothing, so we just. <laughs> yeah. For the protection of people and animals in right. both countries, these rules are being, it's like what happened with Canada. We had that plane load of French bulldogs come in from the Ukraine. Half of them were dead. Somebody tried to cover it up. Uh, somebody found out about it, and that's where we got all those uh, rules that were implemented. I believe it was June 20th or something, about three years ago, where all of a sudden there was a big flash and all these rules were coming out. 
it's an over it's not an overreaction but it's a, no, it's a reaction that needs to happen because it's it's definitely yeah. a problem but i think it's it a, needs to have be looked at at individual yeah. cases more than and it's it's one of those I'm things where room. where they go and they they go overboard right off the bat and then they can tone it back it's very hard to go soft and then try and implement harder rules as you go it's much easier just to go here's the hard rules okay we can scale it back here we can scale it back there and still keep the country safe yeah i I honestly when this first came out you and i talked and i think that's what's going to happen i think they're going to they're going to work it down to a manageable yeah way for us to do this especially people that do it all the time and bordering countries right i i think it will become more manageable as they realize the ramifications of what they put in place but on the other hand they could be just as stubborn as they were on some of the some of the covid rules i mean we had covid rules here where you couldn't buy paint at a paint store, but you could go to Home Depot and buy paint. Uh, <laughs> and and my big question was, is I've never had anyone help me paint, so I don't know how that could spread COVID. So, <laughs> I mean, it's I kind of like the best of Bananarama. It's an oxymoron, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was like, the minute I mentioned painting, everybody's gone, you know? Ah, sorry, got to go. Be like, well, it's just one of those things. <laughs> And I just, I just said, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard, but okay. Uh, we're just going to have to run this out and see if they will scale it back. Uh, if not, plan on doing anything you possibly can before August 1st. And then hopefully by then, like they said, they'll have the form out on July 15th. We'll go and we'll see what that form looks like. Well, maybe, maybe when this all gets to fruition, you and I will come yeah. back on and go through it again. With yeah. Them. And, and the only the only problem is that, sh- that Canada is going to have is they need a government certified veterinarian. And I don't know what the system is like up there, but that means you may have to go through CFIA. Yeah. And you know how much fun they are to work with to get them to mm-hmm. stamp something. I mean, you basically have to make an appointment to go in and get your paperwork stamped by them, then you have to send it to the CDC. Well, let's hope it, it gets straightened out somewhat so it's more manageable. All right, Dougie. Um, not much information that I can help anybody with. There's No, no that was a answers. lot of information. You're, you're going to be surprised. We're going to be glad that you did this for them and, and let us know and keep us informed. Appreciate it, right. and maybe we'll get back and do this in a in a month or so and see where things stand. Yeah, I would I would encourage people to get the information and read it through calmly, and understand when it says you need one of these, and they give you three or four options. Just so that's don't how think that we'll do it. They yeah, do it calmly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't think that you got to provide all four of those. You just need one. Okay, I'm just not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Okay. Appreciate it. Not a problem. Hopefully hopefully we can get this worked out. We'll talk to you later. Thanks, Doug. Thanks for your time. That was really informative, and I'm I'm sure we're going to find our way through this. It just may take a while, but let's uh, let's be patient and not lose our minds over this and try to work through it. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.